Uh, okay, next up we have Screen. Presenting for Screen are Pierre Between and Paul Blacher. Come on out, guys. Hi, I'm Pierre, co-founder of Screen. We are changing the way developers can protect their application. So imagine you're a developer today. It's Monday morning, you have tons of features to work on and bugs to fix. You open your mailbox and you receive an email about a SQL injection attack in your application. This time it's real. You've been reached. So how could this happen? The last security audit was performed only a couple of weeks ago. You have scanners checking vulnerabilities in your code every day. And you even have firewalls in place that were supposed to block it. In fact, security audit cannot be performed each time your code is changed. Scanner reports are full of false positives. You don't trust them. You don't read the reports anymore. And the firewalls, they are way too permissive because you cannot block legitimate traffic. And this is how security is today, whether you are big or small. That's exactly what I experienced for the last 10 years. I was in charge of a security team at Apple, and we could see this gap every day between development and security. Because you have tools for almost everything today. You provision your containers with Docker. You deploy, deploy your application in one click. You get scalable database on AWS, and then you monitor the performance of your app with no relic. Security is left behind, and this is why we build Screen. Screen is a security solution that protects your application at runtime. We monitor critical functions inside the application, like authentication or databases. Being inside the app is actually more than just a technical detail. This allows us to block unknown vulnerabilities, because our protection is based on logic, not just patterns. And that's also the way we tackle false positives. If you want to get the exact details about the vulnerabilities, we provide them directly in the interface, like if you were using your debugger. Don't expect a complex product here, because we've made it so simple. So let's do a quick demo with Paul. Hi, everyone. We have here a standard Rails application. Like most web apps, it has vulnerabilities. So let me go ahead and protect it with screen. It only takes three commands. We just copy them from the interface right here and paste them in the terminal. Because installing screen is not different from installing any other dependency in your application. There we go. It really is that simple. Now let's go back to our web app. It's now protected against all major vulnerabilities. And let me show you how screen reacts to a SQL injection attack. I'm going to perform the attack right here in the browser. Screen blocks the attack immediately. And this is what a hacker would see. Now let me show you what a developer can see on his screen dashboard. The first thing you note here is a summary on top. You can know if your app is currently under attack. You get a bird's eye view of your overall security. and unusual activity is highlighted. But screen goes one step further, because we show you suspicious user activities. We protect your users and customers against account takeovers and brute force attacks. But as a developer, you want to know if the events require actions on your side. So you can just click here on this event and get a full detail on the attack we just blocked. You can see the IP and location of the hacker, debugging information to help you investigate, and the full backtrace here in green, showing you the exact vulnerabilities in your codes, all in one place. Did you get exactly what happened in the demo? Because it's actually pretty cool. When the attack arrived in the application, it went through the different layers of the execution. And when it reached the database layer, screen detected that the attack tried to modify the structure of a SQL query. This is the exact behavior, the exact blueprint of a SQL injection. Screen blocked it and reported it. So where are we now as a company? We already blocked 1 million of attacks so far, and we launched our beta five months ago. More than 400 developers and companies have been using Screen. And as we want to, to, to enable all developers to protect their application, our pricing starts at only $99 per month and scales as you grow with the number of hosts. Today, 
we are really excited to announce that screen is now available for Python, Rails, and Node.js application. We are screen, and we make application security simple. Thank you. All right, great work, guys. Who wants to uh, start off this round? So I have no doubt that every website needs this. This is awesome. But um, maybe you could walk me a little bit through your business development strategy. Like, how do you plan on getting the millions of websites out there using your product? So Screen is a, it's clearly a developer uh, technology. So the, you can sign up on the website, uh, install Screen like in 30 seconds, as you saw. It's, it's really uh, easy. And then you can test it and, and keep it in production if you like it. So it's really like a, a business -orient, uh, developer oriented business. Um, and so we are not uh, you know, struggling like, uh, with uh, high touch sales. Uh, we are really uh, uh, spreading it to, uh, to developers. As you have other technologies for exceptions, uh, lo logging, and so on, uh, that would be a, a stack for security. So, how, so how, do you, um, how are you going to keep up to date with all the different changes and all the different current attacks and make sure that you're actually getting that latest threat under control and the distribution to all the websites that you have out there? So each time an attack is trigger, uh, triggered, um, uh, Screen reports it to, to our backend. And so we have a data set of attacks, uh, which, which we have for all our customers. It's a SaaS, SaaS solution. And so we can work on this data set, and we can improve the logic. Uh, we have a virtual machine inside the app. So that's where the production is, is brought, uh, its logic. And so uh, having like a, you know, the, a big data set with a lot of attacks allows us to constantly uh, renew uh, the prediction and uh, uh, enhance it. What's the performance hit? So we have a performance of all, uh, overhead of 4 uh, to 5%, which is uh, less than you know, the, the, the app performance tools. Uh, and for web technologies, as you can scale uh, with a number of instances, uh, currently our customers are happy with that. Is there any uh, interaction issues you see if, uh, if I'm a developer and if I'm using it? And then it's going into some enterprise application. There's a firewall that does this interfere with what, uh, what, how this is deployed? Because it's still going into the database. So um, current solution are either firewalls, so they block attacks, or they are stressing your applications. So this means that they are basically security scanners. But you don't have anything in between. And screen is exactly at this place because uh, you can get exactly the details about the vulnerabilities in your code, so you can fix it. That's, you know, that's uh, on the landscape, it's a position of the middle. OK, so it's just basically looking at a very high level. You can combine it with uh, other uh, production technologies, of course, like uh, web application firewalls okay. or that can be complementary. OK. So pardon my na naivety, but why would you fix anything? Sorry? Why would you fix anything if you work? Um, so uh, the production is in place. It works. But you know, developers want to see what happened exactly in the code and want to be able to uh, fix it. And also, we want to be free transparent uh, about what happened. So we show them where the, 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 the vulnerability happened, and they can fix it. If they keep screen, they can, they can keep it like this. Uh, they don't need to rush to fix it uh, quickly. So d it's notoriously difficult to make money from developers because they're, they're very inventive, and they don't like to pay for things. So how do you get? How do you build it into a big business? Do you think you get bottom-up developer adoption, and then you eventually have a sales team that will knock on the door of a big company where lots of developers are using it, and then get an enterprise license? So at our stage, we are uh, clearly uh, uh, bottom-up. So we are uh, speaking with developers directly. Uh, we don't need to have sales, sales team right now. But this kind of product can grow uh, on a very wide range of uh, uh, things that you can cover, like readability. And so this means that you could uh, speak with the DevOps teams, uh, security teams inside big companies. And so you can grow your product, uh, basically, and you, don't, you, you won't speak only with, with developers. So you've got this corpus of data that you continue contributing to of these vulnerabilities, right? Which you said you're detecting via logic, not patterns. Or a combination of both? No, no, it's not patterns. It's like logic. OK. So if you're developing this, this corpus of data, could you not then monetize that data, either no. by hunting bugs, hunting new vulnerabilities, and selling No, no, that? That, that, that's clear, clearly an idea. The data set has a huge value. I mean, uh, we have a lot of attacks, and it's uh, really uh, valuable to constantly improve the product. But right now, we want to focus on like, you know, the agent and the operation. That's true that you can, uh, you can think about some, some other activities with the data set. 
uh, and uh, like APIs, plug in it or, you know. Okay. And I'm assuming that for the example, you just chose SQL injection as like a, a easy to understand thing, right? It, it doesn't, that's not the base of what you can do or no, the so, maximum. So what you we can cover do. Uh, most generic uh, security issues like uh, XSS, cross site scripting, SQL injection, account takeover, code injection. These are generic threats. Uh, we don't cover against uh, business specific threats because we cannot do it. I mean, it's, it's specific to your application. Like if you handle a negative payment and this payment will credit someone instead of debiting it, deb debiting him, uh, we can't cover such threats. That's not magic. Uh, What's the lag time from when you think you're finding a threat to when you're notifying the developer? Sorry? Is it real time? Like if I'm noticing something, do you let me know right away or does it take time? Is there a lag time between detection and your screening? It's, it's completely real time. So whenever we detect an attack, we will notify a developer by, uh, through Slack or email. And it's um, yeah, completely real time. Mm -hmm. He will be able to see the full detail on his dashboard directly. How actionable? Is it so when you actually give the alerts to the to the developer at the end? How quickly do you think they'll be able to to patch it or to make it to address it? Because part of it, I think, also would be giving them insights about how they could actually address it as quickly as possible. Yeah. So you can create uh, uh, tickets, like uh, for instance, each time you have a new vulnerability, and so the vulnerability is blocked, uh, the, the the attack is blocked, and then the the, uh, the developer can can. Uh, announce this code like uh, a few days after or a few weeks after. So it's, uh, you can plug it with other systems. And that's uh, expandable as much as you want. Um, so to Rolf's question about the, you know, getting developers to pay, I mean, have you found that, um, and it, that there are like outreach from developers who, wanted, who are trying to negotiate you down a price or just want a free version or anything like that? Or are they all just paying up? Right now, right now, it's not really an issue for us. Um, so we see an adoption f uh, from a wide range of, co of companies from small startups all the way to large um, applications handling mil millions of requests per day. And I mean, developers are already used to pay this, this amount for application performance, performance monitoring, error monitoring. And we believe that security is even as important than, than these topics for, for developers. And I think the pricing, if you compare it to the solutions that exist in the market right now, is really attractive. It's, it's interesting to compare it with the app performance because seven years ago, you had no solution to uh, monitor the, your performance easily for a developer. And so now you can do it like in 30 seconds, install it, and then it's like adopted by most of the developers. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a, a, a must-have technology. It's a nice to have. Uh, and we believe that security can be compared easily to this kind of technology. And some companies manage to do it quite, quite well. So that's what we, we want to achieve. Any other questions? What is it that you're replacing? So uh, which kind of product it replaces, right? Right. So as I said, uh, today, the landscape is split in two different categories. You have a, um, the security scanners, which are stressing the application, and you have the firewalls. So basically, it really, uh, it really is in between, and it doesn't replace a product right now. You can put it and, and use it with like a firewall and use it with security scanners. It even reports more uh, uh, attacks than like the usual uh, uh, attacks that you can have uh, every day. So it's not a replacement. I think it's an addition. And if you, if you ask uh, startups from Series A to Series B uh, what their current security solution is, it's often nothing. Yeah. So, and it's because there is no solution that is adapted currently to continuous deployment and integration. Right. And that's what Screen brings to the table. So you're saying this is a developer tool that everybody should just install automatically? Yeah. Exactly. So you're firing up your instance. Yeah. You're going to start you know, figuring out your strategy. Just install this and then yeah. build on top of it. Yeah. Cool. Any last questions? All right. Give it up for Screen. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.